Good afternoon. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, cultural diversity of the Middle East and North Africa, MENA region, is at risk due to armed conflict, terrorism, and extremism. The concern is not only for archaeological sites and UNESCO World Heritage properties, such as Palmyra and Hatra. In fact, all forms of cultural heritage, tangible and intangible, evidence of a colorful cultural mosaic of this region are threatened, damaged, looted, or neglected. Vernacular architecture in Yemen, historic souks and bazaars in Syria, Sufi places in Libya and other countries, Christian churches in Egypt, Yazidi temples and villages in Iraqi Kurdistan, modern, modern structures, libraries, archives, and museums have been damaged. Doctrinal wiping of monuments and artifacts is more than a cultural tragedy. This is also a security issue as it fuels sectarianism, violent extremism, and conflict. The involvement of non-state actors in new conflicts has made the protection of cultural heritage more complex, requiring a multi-pronged response that includes joint programming with humanitarian, security, and development agencies as one of the key strategies. For responding to this global challenge, a close collaboration with all institutional partners in heritage sector is needed more than ever. This year, ECOMAS celebrated its 50th anniversary. ECOMAS International Council on Monuments and Sites is a non-governmental organization dedicated to conservation of the world's built heritage. It has almost 10,000 members in 144 countries. It has 110 national committees and 28 international scientific committees, including Scientific Committee on Risk Preparedness, or ICORP, Committee on Archaeological Heritage Management, and other committees. ECOMUS has an ad hoc working group that started its activity on Syria in close relationship with Risk Preparedness Committee and with support from the Secretariat since 2011. Iraq, Yemen, and Libya were gradually added to its scope of activities. The working group was officially empowered through a resolution anonymously voted at the Florence General Assembly in November 2014. ECOMAS has been active in monitoring the condition of cultural heritage in the conflict zones, information exchange, training and capacity building for cultural heritage professionals of the region, 3D surveys, technical assistance, participation in international exchanges and debates, contribution to the definition of international working programs. ECOMAS, in collaboration with International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property, or ICROM, has organized two e-learning courses for Syrian heritage experts, and totally over 170 professionals have participated in these programs in the National Museum of Damascus and also in Idlib. ECOMAS is a partner of UNESCO's European Union-founded project of emergency safeguarding of serious cultural heritage. ECOMAS experts have been involved in UNESCO training workshops for Syrian cultural heritage professionals organized in 2014 and 2015 in Beirut, Lebanon. These workshops have addressed issues related to emergency management and documentation, damage assessment, stabilization for built heritage, and also legal framework for the protection of cultural heritage. ECOMAS has been providing technical recommendations and assistance for the protection of Syria's damaged monuments and sites by preparing a step-by-step -step guidance for the protection of fragments of cultural ob objects and debris of damaged monuments. In December 2013, UNESCO World Heritage Center, ICOMAS, and Interpol, with the contribution of ICROM, prepared a plan for preparedness and response to a possible heritage emergency in the old city of Damascus. 
by envisaging the worst case scenario, the plan provides recommendations for the mitigation of the worst risk identified. Next year, in 2016, and based on these recommendations, ICOMAS, UNESCO, and Syria Directorate General of Antiquities and Museum, or DGAM, will prepare and implement risk preparedness and emergency management plans for the old city of Damascus and a number of its significant cultural properties. ICOMAS has also helped UNESCO to develop action plans for the protection of cultural heritage in Iraq and also for Yemeni cultural heritage. Currently, ICOMAS is advising UNESCO World Heritage Center and UNESCO office in Doha, Qatar, for the reconstruction project of Al Qasemi Historic Neighborhood in Sana'a, which was destroyed during the recent armed conflict. <clears throat> project Anga, or phonics. In June 2015, SciArc, uh, a US based uh, charity for cultural heritage, and ICOMAS launched a joint program, Project ANGA, for emergency recording of high-risk heritage in the Middle East and North Africa. The initiative intends to deploy teams of international professionals paired with local experts to digitally document the at-risk sites in 3D before they are destroyed or altered. Yale Institute for the Preservation of Cultural Heritage IPCH has also joined Project ANGA. The pilot portion of the program will focus on Iraq and Syria and seeks to deploy teams to three focused regions to capture and archive 12 cultural heritage sites. These regions were selected based on both their concentration of significant heritage and their accessibility given the current security situation. The priority regions are Damascus region of Syria, Kurdistan region of Iraq, and Baghdad and southern region of Iraq. The project is intended to produce the following outputs. Open access database of all collected information, 3D scans, photogrammic trick models, and photographs with identifying metadata, a dedicated web portal for assessing the database and associated data, a secure archive of all data collected. Amal in Heritage. Amal in Heritage is another project of ICOMAS and its partners. Partner organizations in this initiative are ICROM, Global Heritage Fund, or GHF, the Arab Regional Center for World Heritage, or ARCWH, and ICOMAS. Amal in Arabic means hope, is designed to respond to specific needs for emergency management of cultural heritage in times of crisis in MENA region. It can assist cultural heritage professionals and communities to undertake the survey, salvage, and stabilization measures for their cultural heritage sites and collection at risk when international help and assistance are not immediately available on the ground. <clears throat> when this program is fully developed, it will provide advice, training, and emergency management tools to anyone seeking to provide protection and conservation for all aspects of cultural heritage in this region. AMAL offers distance training and emergency management tools through a mobile and desktop application. Leveraging the capabilities of mobile technology and the cloud, AMAL is a high-tech solution designed to aid in documenting cultural assets and assessing damage to cultural heritage during high-risk emergency situations. AMAL will do this by offering hands-on distance learning tools and technical support applications to experts and other interested parties in MENA region. The primary users of AMAL are public cultural heritage institutions, heritage NGOs, and civil society. AMAL works also as a resource for trained professionals who want to train other professionals and volunteers. AMAL partners intend to develop a pilot and a small initiative with achievable goals in order to explore the possibilities for extending the program after its initial phase in the coming years. 
the pilot initiative is to create one component of AML's app, which is Rapid Impact Assessment Tools and its related training and tutorial materials and guidelines to allow professionals and community members in emergency situations to carry out and or participate in a rapid impact assessment of immovable or movable cultural heritage or use this tool to train local impact assessment teams. The pilot phase provides a step-by-step -step guidance as well as forms and other relevant resources for the collection, organization, and visualization of information on damage and losses caused to culture assets as a result of a specific hazard event. This tool will assist in prioritizing cultural first aid actions and interventions. The deliverables of this phase are an overview base map with ability to crowdsource information from various sources, observation sheets and forms for recording as well as categorizing damage, losses, and vulnerabilities, analytical tool with indicators to identify risks and immediate as well as long-term actions, and the ability to input data in form of audio, video, and text. It has both online and offline capability and synchronization depending on the connection. A step-by-step -step guidance on rapid impact assessment with typology of damages, references, and examples, and a tutorial for AML tools. AML is also working closely with humanitarian sector to develop a common terminology for damage assessment and typology of damage, and to integrate tools that are used for post-disaster needs assessment, is called PDNA, into AML platform in order to keep consistency with humanitarian framework. Before integrating the content of AML into the app, the content will be tested in a regional workshop in early 2016 by, participa by participation of heritage professionals from MENA region. Escape this. After the initial phase, ML will focus on developing other components of mobile and desktop applications for risk preparedness and disaster risk reduction, documentation, emergency response and stabilization, database and mapping systems, and distance learning. The partner organizations of AML in Heritage are pulling resources together to create a program that can be sustained and supported over time with a wide scope to respond to emergency needs of cultural heritage in MENA region and beyond it. AML intends to offer all available management and training tools through a consolidated, high-tech, cost-effective, and sustainable solution. AML collaborates with local stakeholders in the region to develop, test, and use the final product. The partners believe in collaboration with other initiatives and organizations in this field to create a wider coalition and not a fragmented solution for the benefit of those whose tangible and intangible cultural heritage have been impacted by conflict and disasters. Thank you very much.